Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. In today's video, I want to talk about something that, honestly, I'm really surprised I've never done a video on this. <laughs> I, think, I think I now have 300 videos here on YouTube and, and many more uh, besides these. Uh, and for some reason, I've never done a video on an idea that I call soloing levels. Uh, and this is particularly important in regards to the question that I, I seem to answer all the time, which is, uh, you know, I, basically I want to get better at soloing, you know, what do I do? And that's a really common question. The problem is it's a really ambiguous one because it doesn't take into account these soloing levels. Okay, so it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take into account different ways that you can approach a blues. Okay, so let's, let's talk briefly about that. You have... If we have a 12-bar a blues, which I, I was playing over coming in, 12-bar blues in A, right? We have an A, and a D is the four chord, right? Back to the A for the one chord. And I just played this all into the looper coming in. Uh, D, right, the four chord for two bars. This is a quick change. Back to the one. Then I went down to the five. Four, and then the one, and turned it around on the five. Okay, so we have three chords in any 12 bar blues. I think we're all hip to that, but just to be sure, okay? How are you going to play over them, all right? Well, these levels that I speak of are levels of sophistication. And, and even within the levels, there's kind of like sub levels, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna get deep into this. Uh, I should probably preface this by saying that if you're looking for me to teach you a, a lick today, it's not gonna happen. This is a big picture video, right? This is this is the thirty thousand foot view, but this will very much help you to sort of plan out where you're gonna go from here, depending on where you are. So the first and most common way to, pro to solo over a blues is the minor pentatonic scale. And I can use this all the time. I don't have to change the sound at all. I choose to play my pentatonic scale is where I'll say these sub levels come into play. The simplest way uh, is what I call the four note solo pattern. And yeah, you can play over a whole, I've, uh, I've done it. I have a very popular video here, um, it's over 2 million views I think now, uh, called the four note solo. And I play an entire 24 bar solo with those four notes. Yes, I do bend the top one. So you could say it's a fifth note. And you can even kind of squeeze that one and that, that gets into some other things. Um, likely the most common way I think that, that people learn first to solo using the minor pentatonic scale is good old what we call box one. The reason we call it box one is because there's five of them, which means that if you're comfortable playing in box one, to add to that, you could add box two, three, four, and five. So those are, those are, I'll say, you know, kind of the sub levels, right? It's one thing to know, okay, I can play a minor pentatonic scale over this entire chord progression. I don't have to change my scale. I don't have to do anything. I just keep playing that minor pentatonic scale. Okay, that's great. Uh, but you might want to get more complex within that world, in which case you may want to add other shapes. There's other ways to play the minor pentatonic scale. 
Like I said, there's the five boxes. I have things called like the two plus three pattern. You might want to play around with that. Um, two, no, two, no, two strings per box. There's a lot of different ways. Right, so the, all of that though is still within sophistication level one. It's all still minor pentatonic. Adding the blue note, right? Even going so far as to say like, okay, well I'll play the blue scale. To me that's still in sophistication level one because of the fact that the blue scale is really nothing more than the minor pentatonic with this one extra note that we add. So I would call it a sub-level, right? Again, we don't have to make any change based on the chords that are in front of us. We can play this over all three chords. We don't really care what chord we're on. Obviously, if there's some note choices that you can make that, that are better <laughs> for some chords than others, but you don't have to. At the end of the day, you don't have to be aware of the chords. So it's the simplest way to approach soloing. Now, lest you think it's not a great way, I mean, probably 99% of Stevie Ray Vaughan's playing, 99% of Albert King's playing, 99% of Freddie King's playing, is that. It's just the minor pentatonic scale. There's a lot of music in the minor pentatonic and blues scales. So don't, you know, push that aside and think, you know, that's just not hip enough or that's not cool enough. It's really cool. There's a, there's a whole lot of music in, in that sound, okay? But if you want to move up to the next level, and this is where um, I'm gonna say B.B. King is, is probably my, my biggest influence in level two soloing, and that's adding in the major blues sound along with the minor blues sound. Now, again, taking this from the sophistication level, not how you play that, just looking at it from, from the 30,000 foot view again, what that means is that over our one chord, we're gonna mix in the major blues and pentatonic sound. Okay, now, how you're going to do that becomes, I'll say, the sub-levels of level two. A lot of people learn, uh, you know, sort of switching back and forth between box two and box one. I'm, I'm a big proponent of this. I teach it in my Blues Guitar Unleashed uh, as, as, a, as an initial way to get started with this. Uh, you know, if you're, because a lot of us are used to that root. So there's the minor pentatonic sound. If we play box two there, we get the major pentatonic sound, right? So that's, that's, a, that's a good common way to do it. Another common way that I don't love so much is what is the three frets down trick. So if I play minor pentatonic, if I move that three frets down, it's now A major pentatonic. But you have to keep track of the fact that your pinky is now the root instead of your first finger. So it's a little bit different. Again, not my favorite, but that's not what this is about. There are other, lots of other ways to play the major, major pentatonic and blues sound. But what's important for level two is that you understand that you can only use that over the one chord. Okay, so over the A7 chord, you use the A major blues along with your A minor blues. It's not, a, it's not necessarily a replacement, but you can add it in. Over the four and five though, you don't. You continue to play the A minor blues sound. So this is a little bit more complex than level one. Level one, you didn't care what the chords were. You went through the whole day, the whole, the whole song, not the whole day, you went through the whole song, like, ah, cool, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna play my licks, I'm gonna throw them out there, it's gonna be cool, we're gonna have a good time. That's totally fine, it's great. This requires a little bit of paying attention. You gotta know what the chords are now because it's only when the one chord is going on that you can, that you can use this trick. So that's a little bit more complex, a little bit more sophisticated, right? And again, the sub-levels within that are different ways to play the major blues sound, right? There's a lot of different options. Getting more comfortable switching back and forth between the major and the minor blues sounds in different positions, different fretboard regions. Those are all things that you can sort of add to the complexity, right? But if we wanna go a step further 
and we get to what I call level three complexity, at this point, you're now treating every single chord as if it's a new key. Okay, so now over the A7 chord, for example, I'm going to be playing not, I'm going to be playing combination of A minor and A major pentatonic. But when it goes to the D, I'm going to switch to a D major and D minor pentatonic mix. When it goes to the E, I'm going to switch to playing the E major minor mix of, of blues scales. Uh, and this is this is more, a lot more, I'll say modern blues players. Matt Schofield comes to mind, Josh Smith. They add in some jazzy elements and some outside things as well, which uh, to me is, is a higher level. But nonetheless, um, I have heard B.B. King do some of this type of stuff as well. It's, it's less common, this sort of level three idea is, is much less common in more traditional blues and, and much more common in more modern blues players. But there are, uh, occasionally you'll hear guys like T-Bone Walker or, or uh, uh, Lonnie Johnson use some of these uh, these types of ideas. They're fewer and farther between, but, but they're there. So just to give you a feel, right, if I again start my looper, so here, coming back to the one chord, So I'm going to follow it. Now one, five, four, one, five, one, four, one. stay, you know, I don't have to stay in that zone the whole time. I can always switch back to a level two idea or a level one idea. But level three, it definitely requires more thinking. I'm literally redesigning, remapping, whatever you want to call it, my entire fretboard with every new chord that comes along. Okay. Jimi Hendrix, you think about things uh, like Little Wing, um, you know, that idea. Every chord uses a different pentatonic scale. So, so for every single chord along the way, he's reconfiguring the fretboard to, to a large degree. So this is this can be used for rhythmic ideas as well as lead ideas. Okay. Now, again you sort of have, you know, subcategories. But once you get to level three, the subcategories sort of get, get more difficult. It's the same kind of thing as with level two. It's just different regions of the fretboard. You know, being able to make, for example, A, and being able to go to D without having to, you know, jump up to here. But being able to keep it all in one place. That can be a challenge. Well. Then if you go up here, being able to do the same thing, and then E, right, all in that region. And there's, you know, five fretboard regions. That's why we have five boxes. So for any one of those five regions, you're going to have different patterns to work with. So you can think of those as sort of, again, the sub-levels within this level three idea. And again, this level three idea is for every single chord, we're now reconfiguring the fretboard. Level two, we only reconfigured the fretboard a little bit for the one chord, the four and five stayed the same. For level one, we didn't ever reconfigure the, the fretboard at all. The whole time it's minor pentatonic and we don't do anything else and that's just it, okay? So we get as we get more sophisticated, 
you got to know your stuff better. <laughs> now for me, level four is where the gloves come off and we start to pull in these jazzier elements, things like modes, things like outside sounds, half hole diminished, altered dominant, Lydian dominant, all of these, these other sort of jazzy outside sounds using, uh, you know, jazz back cycling, all this kind of stuff. This is stuff that you'll hear guys like Robin Ford, Larry Carlton, Scott Henderson, Josh Smith, you'll hear them do this stuff. And you can probably hear it. And a lot of times it makes your ear sort of go, okay, that's interesting. It's definitely not a traditional blues sound. You may never want to get there. A lot of players don't. If you do aspire to get there, it's, it's a journey. There's no question about it. There's a lot of stuff to learn along the way. Because I would argue that in order to get to level three, you got to have level two and level one down cold. In order to get to level two, you got to have level one down cold, right? In order to get to level four, you got to have levels one, two, and three down cold. And what I see a lot of players try to do, a lot of players try to go from level one to level four. And man, that's a, that's a tough, tough jump to make. It's really, really tough. And it's going to be really frustrating. And it's going to turn you off. And that's a problem, right? It's supposed to be a journey and you're supposed to learn along the way. But you got to keep things in order. You got you to get through the progression of things in a reasonable fashion. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up by saying that the best thing you can do after watching this video, well, first is potentially go watch it again. But in order to really get the most out of it, you need to examine what you're doing now. You need to really take a hard look at, okay, what am I playing right now? Am I basically playing the minor pentatonic scale the whole time? If so, you're at level one, okay? So if you say to yourself, I really want to get better at blues soloing, okay, well then the, the natural next progression is to first get to where you can use that minor pentatonic scale in all of the positions and, and feel comfortable moving around between them still in that level one area, but, but being comfortable moving all around between them. Then you can start tackling level two. Do I know a major pentatonic scale? You may not even know one, right? I've got a video on how to do that. Go check it out. Uh, do a search on the channel. I'm sure you'll find it. But the that's that's going to be your next step, right? Is learning that, that major blues sound. And then it's going to be, can I switch back and forth between them comfortably in, in any position? Okay. Um, again, I, and I do have courses for that sort of thing. You know, that's, that's obviously not something you can do in, in, in a 10 minute video <laughs> that takes time. Uh, there's a, there's a lot to that. So don't be afraid to, to take that on, but understand that it is going to take some time and it is going to take some patience. Maybe you do currently play very comfortably at a level two level, and you really want to move up to that level three, uh, area. Now you know what it is, right? Now you know what the next thing on the horizon might be for you. Is it for everyone? No, it's not. A lot of players never get there, don't wanna get there, don't care, they sound great, they're professional, they sound fantastic. It's not necessary, okay? You can sound really good playing blues without ever going to level three or level four. Some people just wanna learn as much as they possibly can though, and they wanna go as far as they can possibly go. If you're that person, I encourage you to take a look at that. It's definitely a challenge, but it's, I think, very rewarding along the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope this maybe gets the wheels turning, uh, gets you thinking and looking a little more towards what it is you need to work on next. I think that's really important, uh, particularly, again, when goal setting, right? If you're thinking, I really want to improve my soloing, how? How are you gonna improve it? You can't just say, I really want to improve my soloing. I really want to work on that. Okay, well, what about it do you want to work on? You have to be specific or you're gonna spin your wheels a lot, <laughs> all right? So as always, if you have a friend that you think would dig this video, please feel free to share it with them. If you're watching this on YouTube or the Facebooks or whatever, uh, like, subscribe, follow, whatever it is called. I, you know, the social media will change, so I'm, I'm, not, too, uh, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but I encourage you to be on the Blues Guitar Unleashed email list. Um, you know, sign up for the, the guidebook or uh, the four note solo. I'll leave links uh, near this video, depending on where you're seeing it. Um, check those things out because I definitely 
uh, you know, my email subscribers are, they get more. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. So uh, anyway, I encourage you to do that and I will say farewell. I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Talk to you soon. Take care.